Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're going to be doing a really fun live stream tonight. This is going to be a different type of a DAW demo. Uh, for those who have been around a while, every couple of years we have people come in and we facilitate a DAW demonstration. Some people come in for about 30 minutes, demonstrate how they use that DAW, and then maybe 30 minutes of Q&A. So if you've got questions and stuff, we definitely want you to put them into the chat as we're going through this evening. And uh, we're going to be doing these DAW demonstrations again this year, but for tonight, it's going to be something different. I'm going to bring on, and I'm going to bring her on right now, Becca Johnson, who is really passionate about Hindenburg. And of course, I'm here to defend Audacity. So <laughs> welcome, Becca. Hi, thank you for having me, Steve. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be a lot different than uh, what we're used to. Uh, I wanted to remind people to uh, let... StreamYard have permission to use your face and your image so that I can post it like Steph from, let's see, she's in, uh, she's now, she, she, she was in Split Croatia twice. Now she's in, gosh, you just talked to her the other day. She's I now did, and I don't remember. Spain. <laughs> Sorry, Steph. Oh, yeah, Spain. Valencia, yeah. Spain, uh, with Craig Wheeland, who also lives there. So, yay, from Sleepy Great. Land. Yes, because it's, what, eight hours ahead of us. So she's probably two in the morning. She said she was going to stay up for this. That's that's how big of a deal this is. Well, she's a she's a fan of yours. Uh, well, she's a fan of yours too. She's a fan of <laughs> Hindenburg as well. So that's true. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, I was just listening to. And don't worry, folks. We'll get to this in a minute. But <laughs> I was listening to you on Steph's Global Podcast Editors Chat. Yeah. Uh, which is just a week or two ago. And she was talking about how she hired you to teach her how to use Hindenburg because the tutorials that you find are all, you know, they're all over the place and they don't always get to the point where you're looking and, and you can just answer those questions right away. So that's something that you do. You teach yes. people Hindenburg. I do. I, uh, I'm a Hindenburg trainer, so I do workshops and webinars for them. And then I do Hindenburg tutoring one on one uh, just on my own. As well as, you know, I'm also an audio engineer and work a podcast and audio editor and all that stuff too. Right. And you've been doing this professionally since 2013? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Steve, good. you did your homework. I, I, it was just a week ago, so I can retain. Memory. I've got a good memory. It's just a short one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I actually didn't start editing for others until 2016. So you got a couple of years on me there. That's, that's impressive. But you started a podcast in 2010, correct? Yeah, but I, I don't know if I'd call it editing. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. It was editing. It just wasn't editing anywhere near the quality and the and the type of uh, you know scope that I'm doing now. Yeah. Somebody here is saying, uh, "Yay, fire!" Something like that. What's what's the? Or no, it's um, rock on, rock and roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rock on fire. Yeah. I'm well, waiting to see that. that person's... Back at you, whoever you are, <laughs> mystery face. Yeah. Uh, before we kick into this live stream, um, Becca and I want to let you all know that this is a live stream that's being facilitated by Hindenburg. And the reason for that is they're sponsoring the Podcast Editors Conference, which is being held in Dallas, Texas, August 23rd. That is the day where the evening kickoff event happens for Podcast Movement. So we're going to have a one-day mastermind event. It's very exclusive. You're going to be working along with your peers in that room. This isn't slideshow conference thing. This is walking through the steps on how to create a business model. And if you want to learn more, go to podcasteditoracademy.com slash conference. And I'm really looking forward to it because it's really, it's going to be impressive. Becca, you do coaching, so you've seen what it does. Have you actually hired someone to coach you to become really good at something? I have. Uh, the most recent uh, uh, coaching that I had was I, I um, actually, I don't know if you all know about Marie Forleo. She does mm -hmm. a lot of business. Oh, you do. I love her. She does a lot of business coaching. She's got B-School, which I'm a member of. Um, I also recently uh completed the copy cure. And so I know we're audio people, but we all have websites. And so I found it um, highly, highly valuable. Um, you get, I think, more than your money's worth in that um, because I, I can use it all the time. I reference it. I've had B-School for years. I reference that all the time. Any courses that I've bought and kept, um, I've bought like Isotope courses. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, logic, 
I have those forever and I use them forever and I reference them all the time. So. But what if you're somebody like me where you buy it and you do a couple minutes worth and then you forget about the rest? <laughs> but you're saying the Marie Folio, I know how much that used to cost. Yeah. You say a couple of years ago. So we're talking about mm -hmm. a four figure number. Uh, oh, not when I bought it. I mean, I was, I, I bought it, I would say I'm in 2014. Okay. It was a thousand dollars. So well, it, four was, figures. Yeah, it was four yeah. figures. Yeah. That's well, I forgot how much it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, tickets to the podcast editors conference are 199 bucks. So if you're going to be around Dallas, you don't have to have a podcast movement ticket to come to our conference. So uh, come and join me, Mark Deal. You know, Daryl Darnell's, a, he's going to be there. John Gay's going to be there. We're going to have some real heavy hitters there. And you're going to be sitting at tables with them. So, uh, and I'm talking to the audience on the screen. Come, come, come. Please come to the Podcast Editors Conference. Go to podcastetteracademy.com slash conference. Okay, that's enough of that sales pitch. But I do want to say thank you to Hindenburg for sponsoring the podcast editors conference this year. And I'm looking for the right link. Here we go. And if you want to learn more about Hindenburg, we go to Hindenburg.com slash events slash P E C. They're going to have some special offers there, I believe. Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm hemming and hawing because this is going to be scary. We're going to be doing a DAW demo, um, but it's really going to be a battle of the, of the, of the DAWs. Mm -hmm. uh, dueling banjos type style here. Becca and I are going to go through some of the things that most people would be interested in learning about when you're talking about editing podcasts. Uh, Becca's got more of the engineering skills. I'm definitely talented or experienced, we'll say, on the cutting stuff. So maybe we'll find a happy medium in there. But really what we're going to do is going to demonstrate the differences between these two draws. I've got Audacity. Becca's got Hindenburg. Uh, so I'll be popping the screen back and forth uh, like like this. Every once in a while, you're going to see it change around to, oh, guess what? I got the wrong screen picked. <laughs> and uh, that way, you'll be able to see what we're doing and be able to hear it as well. So, Becca, we've got a few things on a list here. Now, yeah. something that we do, uh, we don't do well with Audacity is recording, uh, recording people from the Internet. Because mm -hmm. Audacity is basically, it's a standalone DAW on my computer. I've got to get a virtual mixer or something. Now, Hindenburg has something where you actually can incorporate different tools to be able to record both you and the people over the internet. Is that correct? Yep. It uh, routes your audio from Zoom, Google Hangouts, or Google Meet, I think it's called now, uh, FaceTime, any, any of those major applications. So uh, I will show you how to do that. Let's scoot over to Zoom. You go into your preferences, and this is the same for any, you know, Skype, um, Google, whatever. Uh, go in, go to your audio, and your output or speakers on Skype or various other applications. Look at that. You pick Hindenburg. So it really just becomes Shows another up. device on your computer, essentially. Yep, it's just a it's just an easy way to to route this to route the sound. So, but then what you do in Hindenburg is let's say the guest is on track two, I'm on track one. All I do is select other applications, and then we're done. And now when I hit record, the guest will show up here, and I'm up here, and that's it's as easy as that. Wow. Now in Windows, just like heads up, it's called um, communications device instead of other applications in this drop down menu. On Hindenburg. Device. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Windows users remember that. Communications device. Yes. Interesting. Okay, that's that's very cool. Okay, so you win on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was an easy one. <laughs> uh, with Audacity, let me just jump over to Audacity on my screen here, and you can see. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that we can adjust volume levels. Obviously, there's a little bit of a manual process, uh, but then we've also got the compressor in here, and I've just got this basic setup. And if you uh, watch what happens when I, I can't really show you the whole screen without losing the OK button here, but. Uh, you're going to see everything being compressed, which means the volume is going to go up on the lower parts. It's not necessarily going to bring down the top, the high parts, but you're going to see it here. And those red areas, by the way, if you don't know, folks, the red areas are showing that it's clipping. I can turn that off in the view features. There's show clipping on and off, but really I want to know that it's there. That's just warning me, hey, this is too loud. But we did see, and I'll just put it back. Let me go back to the original setting. You know, how much different that looks with the compression 
and the bottom one too. The bottom one's really quiet. I didn't even point that one out. Um, so let me let me put everything back. Uh, and then there's a, a normalize feature as well. So we've got normalize, and I just bring it down to negative two decibels. Actually, sometimes bring it down to negative three. It depends on the on the project. But uh, you're going to see this area only come down. You can see those red lines disappear. And there you go. So that's a way that we can adjust volume with a couple of, I wouldn't call them automated tools, except I do have a, uh, I created a macro that tackled here. In fact, here, we're going to do it. Here's my macro. It's compressor, normalization, done. That's nice. Uh, and there's more you can do. However, uh, that's that's all kind of like you got to do these, you know, click, 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 click. What do you do in Hindenburg? Okay, so first of all, Nick went through Audacity. Nick, the um, journalist and engineer and founder, one of the founders of Hindenburg, we kind of looked at Audacity and watching you work on it too. It's actually very impressive with the, the knowledge and all of the stuff that you have to know. And I don't mean that to be flippant. flippant. It really is. I mean, it's it's a lot of, um, I mean, you really have to to learn to do that and kind of dig around a little bit. So that is impressive. Um, but it, and it, Hindenburg just makes it a little easier. So we're going to import some audio and I'll do, let's see, first I'll show you, you can do it in a couple different ways. You can click import here and you know add some audio now watch what happens when this is well this is a show that's completed but um that's one way to import we'll delete that the other way is to drag and drop the other way is to this is no, we changed my vision or my <laughs> the resolution around so it's harder to get my mouse up here so the other way is to drag and drop from your desktop, drag and drop from your favorites. We'll go over the clipboard later. But what happens in Hindenburg, every single time you import audio, it auto levels. So um, let's look at, you can see what's happening is it's changing the volume. And that changed quite a bit that uh, what happens is Hindenburg determines What's music? What is narration? What is ambience? So it sets the levels for you. And if I go and make a break in, in any of the regions, and then I select, and then I hit Command L and auto level, it will do that with every single break you make throughout the, the show. So what I do when I'm editing, I'll edit the show, and then I'll do one last pass of auto leveling uh, and, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to kind of go through and, and listen to make sure that everything is exactly where you want it. But that's an excellent uh, feature. And so auto leveling is based on loudness, which is, you know, the way that we measure sound based on how the human ear works. Uh, so it makes all of the all of the audio is perceived as equally loud, including music and narration and ambience. So it makes mixing very, very easy. And you can set that in preferences um, it, based on whatever uh, country you're in. It's US, EU, and UK. So I'm at US mode. Um, and then is should we cover normalization now? Or um, Yeah, because I did. It's only fair. So you can throw the we, next punch. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> 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 so if we were to export... Um, Let's go to options and um, we've got our loudness here. So what we can do is pick our luffs. Uh, we can also do nor no normalization, but you know, this our standard for podcasting is negative 16. So that's what I'm at. Um, that is how that goes. So everything is really automated here with the leveling. We do have a question from someone. Uh, whoop, here we go. Uh, can that be turned off? Yes. Yep. Auto can level. Can you show computer. us that? Um, that would be in preferences somewhere. Um, I really never have turned it off. So let's, we were doing this together, Steve. I'm oh. sure there's a, a reason for it. I'm wondering what it is. I do know that if they're like me, they're a control freak. And right. I don't like things happening without me knowing about it. Or, I know or, you can. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't know the answer to this, but there is a way. 
Okay. I would refer to Hindenburg.com and go to the support. <laughs> and there are tons and tons of videos and, uh, you know, everything, every answer that you'll ever get there. I'm sorry. I don't know that answer, That's but okay. it can be done. They can go to, whoops, not that one. Where is the, here we go. Sorry. This is the URL. There we go. Go to Hindenburg.com slash events and P, slash PEC for podcast editors club. And that's where you can get started with Hindenburg uh, and do the search in the, in the knowledge base for that. Uh, Christy, Christy Stapleton favorites is sits in the clipboard, but you can use these groups. One, two, three, four, eight. So the clips, why don't you go ahead and explain the clips area? Since I know that's really one of the features that I'm a fan yeah. of. It's yeah. so much different than most other DAWs. Sure. Uh, I'm going to open. Okay. So this is the clipboard. You can think of this as your note cards, your whiteboard, uh, your scratch pad. Um, you know, as, as we know, the, the old way of doing this is to, this is the full interview. You take, you know, here's the intro, pull this down here, you know, um, I might use this part. I'm going to put it on the maybe, you know, we all know how to do this, right? So that's sort of the old way to do it. Um, the clipboard is just a way to arrange your story, your show. So I want to just do a quick side note. Um, a lot of people don't know how Hindenburg was. If Is this okay to tell a quick little story about how Hindenburg became? Yes, as long uh, as there's no fart jokes. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but now I'm bummed I don't have a fart joke. Um <laughs> So Nick is the sound engineer and journalist. He was working in community radio, radio in Zambia in Africa. And um, the community radio stations that were built there for, for people were not being used uh, because they weren't telling people stories. They just had CDs and a microphone and a signal. Uh, so Nick was hired to go in and figure out what the problem was. He figured out and spending a lot of time with elders in various communities and chiefs and, and, uh, various communities, he figured out that everybody is excellent storytellers and they want to tell their own stories. He also was working with a lot of people who didn't read or write, uh, let alone hadn't, you know, see, seen a computer. So, um, in all of his experience with different DAWs, he kind of searched around, didn't find any that he thought was acceptable or or that they could even use. So he met, you know, or met up with his friend Prabin, the software engineer and or developer, and they created Hindenburg for those communities. So for storytellers. Um, so that said, Nick being, you know, having a background in music and being a sound engineer made it it very, very powerful. So the whole reason the clipboard is there is for, this is for storytelling and every aspect of storytelling was kind of really, really thought out very well. That's why the clipboard is here. So um, back to the demo on the clipboard. So, uh, I'm going to delete this here. So here's what you can do. These, you can have various groups, double click, change the name, uh, this is how you can take all your, all your clips and organize them and regroup them. You can play them from here. I'm going to press the play button. Simone and Kipsky put a lot of that humor into their music videos as well. You can preview them. Um, you can, let's see, you can, so when you want to use them, you drag and drop and once they've been used, they're grayed out. So you can tell if you've used them. That doesn't mean that you can't use them again. Uh, the favorites are there every single session that you open up. So I, this is, you know, look at how I clean this up regularly. These are all my favorites. Um, this is where I store my music and my intros um, for various shows that I work on. So like, for example, this is an intro to a show and as you can see it's been edited and it's a couple tracks you can use as many tracks as you want and bring it over to the clipboard so let's say i want to bring this to my clipboard i select everything and i hit command and drag it over you can also copy and paste double click change the name so again the favorites are there every time that is 
really, really convenient. And this clipboard, I've become very dependent on the clipboard. When I use other DAWs, I get really crabby that the clipboard isn't there. <laughs> it's so irritating to not have one. Um, now, do those favorites stay every time you open up Hindenburg or yep. can you save templates and they have different favorites? Um, you can save. That's a really good question. The favorites stay the same, but you can import your clipboard from other sessions as well. Okay. So, yeah. So I could have a, basically a template. Asked. Yeah, a template having. So I've got one show, intro, outro, and a sound effect in the middle. I've got another one that has just music uh, and uh, I don't know, something else. And and, they, and we use sound effects over and over again, like phone rings and stuff like that. That could be imported for that show's work. Yeah. And then the mm -hmm. favorites are always the same. The one at the bottom yes. you're saying is always the same. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. By the way, Jason said when we were looking for how to turn off, he says it was in advance. I was just there. So, yeah, he said so too. And I was there. You I were was... just there. <laughs> I don't think it's that important. We know where it is now. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jason. That is if we want to turn off the auto le Is it magic levels? Auto levels? Auto levels. Auto levels. Mm -hmm. What's magic levels? Steve, I'm glad you asked. Oh, that boy, here we go. is my favorite. <laughs> Another one. Another this is, I mean, let me, I tell this story all the time. When they came out with magic levels, I saw on, on their old YouTube channel, this new feature pop up. I watched the video and I got chills. Mm -hmm. I love this feature. I, um, let me show you. Um, okay. So look at this mic bleed. It is ridiculous. Um, so we're talking to editors mostly, correct? Yes. Or, or that's who we're people, speaking to right now. People, people audio edit. editors. Uh, okay. Yep, they edit everybody knows what mic bleed is. Everybody. So this is a round table recording. Everybody is on their own microphone at a table, kind of close together. So uh, this is, you know, Andy is talking here, but look at how it's picking up everywhere. Um, as we know, the old way to edit this was to manually duck everybody or delete everybody on every other track um, various different ways uh, you know by muting by deleting the entire session um, I used to work on a show that was four people in various breweries sitting at tables and they're so their microphones are very close when magic levels um, Became a feature. It cut my workload by 70% on that show. So here's how magic levels work. Instead of doing that, I go select all, go up to tools, hit magic levels, and check that out. It Holy Toledo. That's determined fast. who's speaking and who's not. Now, if for some reason it's still too loud, I can still hear the other people on the other tracks. I can just change the dampening. Um. I have so there never is, had to use that, but you can. But there Sorry, is Bob. still a mic bleed there. It's just, it's diminished so much that it's not going to be it, that you noticeable. Can't, you can't hear. Yeah. You can't, you can't hear the difference. And like I said, I've never changed the dampening levels because it's, it's, I haven't had to. Mm. Um, and, you know, I always say, well, use your ears and listen, uh, test it out if you want and see what sounds good to you. But that, okay. I mean, that one show went down 70% in my time. Oh, I guess it would. Yeah, dang. It was wow. it was insane. Yeah. You know, I've seen this demonstrated before. I don't know why it's just never stuck in my brain. Because mm -hmm. that's freaking impressive. <laughs> it, yeah, it really is. Yeah. In fact, I know what I'm going to do next time I get Mike Lee between two channels. I'm just going to open open up Hindenburg. I've got it here. here. Go. I just got to use it more. Yes, and and it's so easy. You select all, and then tools, and magic levels. That's it. Let's go back to uh, editing because you were you were demonstrating how to cut stuff mm -hmm. with that previous mic bleed, and maybe you could do that. I mean, I could show you how I do it. I mean, basically, let me let me show people how I would do. Uh, let me see if you can you hear this. That is because I know. Yes, you can hear that. Okay, um, there for this specific client, uh, she is very particular when she speaks. She's not going to keep going and going and going and make mistakes and, and stop and rephrase. She's going to stop, think about what she's going to say, and there's a lot of gaps. So I can easily cut gaps and stuff like that. But it's very important when I cut the top track that the bottom track is synced. Becca, I'm going to have you 
uh, discuss that as well. How do you keep the track sync? So remember that when I bring you back up. Uh, and there's a, a setting in Audacity that let you turn it on and off. Uh, you can see here where my mouse is, and if I, I don't think I can zoom in anymore. Yeah, I can. Uh, all these little, they look like clock symbols, and that's just showing you that the, the tracks are locked. If I were to zoom all the way back out, if I were to pull this track to the right, it pulls the other one with it as well, which is ideal when you're editing a conversation like this. And for me in Audacity to delete, it's simply, uh, well, I, you know, I'm trying to wonder if the default key is D or not. <laughs> I have to look up that it's been so long. Uh, you can create keyboard shortcuts with Audacity any way you want. Uh, so if I just hit the D key, it's delete. And there's all these gaps that I'm going to be deleting and deleting and deleting. And there's going to be areas where it's going to be, uh, you know, something I've got to delete. But if I've got to move some stuff around, this is where it gets tricky. So Becca, remember this because I want you to show us how, how would you move uh, this piece of the conversation to the left without moving the top section? Let's say they were talking over each other and we've got to shift them a little bit. The way I do it is I'm going to go up and I'm going to uh, turn off the... Goodness, you know, it's been so long I don't remember how to turn off the Sync Lock Tracks feature. It's got to be here. Here it is. Tracks, Sync Lock Tracks. I'm going to turn it off. You're going to see those little clock symbols go away. So now if I did something on this bottom track, the top track is not going to be affected. Let me just go ahead and delete that. You see how that bottom track moved but the top didn't. I'm going to put it back. What I do if I've got to move this to the left is I'm going to copy it. So I just used Control C, or you could use the clipboard up here. And I'm going to delete it because now I have it copied to my clipboard. Everything moves over, but I can put that back in the same, what was that, what, five seconds? Uh, I'm going to paste it here. So now everything shifts over to the right again. And now I've moved everything around. So I Sync lock tracks is helpful when you're editing, and then when you've got to shift things around, you got to turn it off. Um, and then deleting, obviously, you got to keep that sync locks track on when you're doing double tracks. I don't have to worry about dragging my cursor down and all that stuff. In fact, I could have you know eight tracks, and as long as all eight tracks are audio files, they're all going to sync up, and they're not going to you know they're not going to move apart from each other. So with editing in Hindenburg. How do you do that as far as you've got two tracks, you've got to keep them synced, but then at one point you have to shift, you have to time shift something. Okay. So I think I, I think I understand the question. So I'm just going to build a little A and B mm -hmm. type thing here. Okay. So you want, um, you want to edit, these two together but maybe move this around okay is that is that accurate that could be one way sure I, i'm talking about basically i've got two people having a conversation you got to keep them in line you can't you can't delete 10 minutes out of one track and not the other okay so the first thing that i would do is i would link the tracks so i'm going to click these these tracks that i want to edit and right click link tracks so if I, I want to lock them together. Yep. Okay. And if I wanted to do all the tracks, I just select them and hit link tracks. If I want to undo it, um, right click, unlink. That's, that's, I, I kind of move through those all the time when I edit. So um, if I wanted to, does that answer the question? If I wanted to, you can sort of choose what you want to keep here, link these, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, scoot this around and edit this. Is that what you're talking about? For some I reason, guess so, I yeah. Have... For Audacity, there's one key that does it all. And you're saying you have to select the tracks you want to lock. Yep. And then unlock them if you want to time shift them at all. For, for example, remember the days of Zencaster Drift? We had to shift things around because one track would be 50 minutes, another would be 45. And at some point, audio oh, just... Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. shifting Correct. things yeah. around. Yeah. So you can't keep them locked, otherwise... You know they're they're going to be out of out of place. You got to fix it. Yeah. So are you asking how you manually sync up drift or are you? Well, no, no. I think you've demonstrated that at okay. least to me. If folks, if in the chat, if you uh, understand what we just uh, described, go ahead and well, if you didn't understand, say no, Steve. I don't get it. <laughs> it's probably a little bit easier to um, to demonstrate if if I had a better example on Becca's end. Uh, do you have a conversation? Two tracks, double end or anything like that? Yeah. That you can pull in. 
Um, let's see. Steven says, yeah, I'll got it. LOL. Well, uh, David says 100%. Okay. So a couple people are giving us, you know, kudos there. Well, I'll just go back to this one here. Um, okay. So for some reason, my audio is not showing up. Oh, that's weird. It's learning. Yeah, you just had it. You can hear it. I don't know, but it happened uh, <laughs> with the music over here, and I was not saying anything because I was hoping it would go away. Um, <laughs> so, so, would that have anything to do with because I'm having trouble with getting my my uh, mouse from my one screen to my second? Would that Maybe. have anything to do with? Yeah. Well, you know, we, we can. I think we can see visibly. You've got okay. so many markers there. We can see if you're moving yeah. stuff around. We don't have to hear it. Okay. We can hear it. Text manager here at the Virginia. So, okay. So if, um, you know, I can, I can just edit if I want to delete something from these guys here and keep everything here. Um, so there's no so ripple delete there. There's no so, ripple delete or anything like that. No, you can, you can determine. How do you, uh, how do you delete without a ripple delete or do you have to command it to do a ripple delete where it brings the tracks together? There's no space. There's no, gap. Oh, that's just X. There's there's the audio. Okay. Oh, it must be because we've got some latency going on or something. So that is just X. Okay. X is delete. And then the command that you were doing there's to delete, remove those. Delete is delete. And then X is the cut, which brings everything over. So let me undo ah. that. P and Z. So I'm just selecting all these and hitting delete for the space. But what I use constantly is, let's say I want to get rid of this part, X. I use X the entire time I'm editing. Now, I notice that you're dragging up and you're selecting a couple different tracks. That's because I'm... my tracks are not linked. So now ah. if I link the tracks, it will do that automatically. Okay. Yeah, I've got a client. He's got two co-hosts. And when they start going, when they're 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 all almost on the edge of going blue, uh, things, you know, got to get shifted around a little bit because they're just all talking at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm shifting, you know, three tracks. One okay. At a time, yeah. Different places, just so the listener can understand what what is all being said. Sure. So I've got a little trick for for overlapping audio. Um, let's say we want to, you know, let's say that, uh, you know, that this isn't mic bleed, and this person has interrupted. This person is still talking. Mm -hmm. We want the interrupter to not start talking until this guy's done. So we select this here, hit shift command white arrow, and now he's completed what he's saying, and now he started talking, everything has stayed in time. You can do that when all the tracks are linked. Oh, interesting. So that is how you quickly move interrupters. So <laughs> that would be good for your show. For, for your podcast that you edit, not your yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's All just right. a quick and dirty tip for you. Okay. I'm going to call Audacity a win on that one, although Hindenburg, you've got some cool stuff there too. Uh, and the keyboard shortcut that pushes it all to the right. That's interesting. All right. Because that pushed it down the timeline. So is that correct? It pushed it further down the timeline? It just made space. Um, do you want me to do that again? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I got to see it again. Um. So yeah, it moved it everything, everything over the and selected the, the it just took the audio that I want to nudge, but it nudged the entire session over. By the way, uh, another great um, sort of select all is um, option command click. <laughs> and that will that will click, you know, that will select everything to the end instead of having to go, you know, sort of like shift and then all the way find to the end of your session and select. Um, it's just option command click. And it will select all to end. Now, how come it didn't select the ones to the left? Because I clicked here. So if I do that over here, if I want to select all of these, I so, so, so if I want to select everything in from here where my mm -hmm. mouse is until the whole end of my session, option command click. So it's always everything to the right. Yes. Okay. All right. That makes sense. I guess that makes sense too if, if you think about it as you know when you're reading a book you never you never go right to left so 
if we're selecting right. audio, we've already yes. done everything from the left. Yeah. So why would we do anything moving it on the left? We, we yeah. only move to the right. I, okay. I use that, um, those quick keys all the time. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what about the audio engineering stuff? I mean, I've got some tools inside of, oh, so, by the way, somebody says super useful shortcut. Yay. Uh, what do we do for audio engineering stuff? I know you've got the magic levels, the auto levels. So we talked about leveling. We talked about the, uh, um, well, compression is basically taken care of there. What about EQ and things like that? What does Hindenburg offer? Okay. So, um, let's go over the voice profiler first. Now, this is really, really easy. All this is, is it's an EQ. There are two different ways we can use the voice profiler. So we've got this person here. Um, what the, the first way that you can use this is if you have recorded yourself or a guest has recorded themselves on in ideal circumstances with, let's say, a great mic in a studio or in a treated room, um, you and you want to save that audio and take a snapshot of what that EQ sounds like, that is Learn Profile. So we're going to look at what that looks like. So what Hindenburg does is you press play Both and Andy Morik. analyze the EQ of you in your ideal circumstances on your ideal microphone. And just that quick second I played, it started analyzing. Kawa in the IPG studio on the campus. Play that for, let's say, 15 seconds. And you can now save that. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like over here. For I've got a couple saved. This is somebody that was a host on one of the uh, shows I worked on, and she traveled a lot, so she was not always in the studio. Uh, but So I took a, a grab of her profile when she was in the studio, learned the profile, saved it, pulled it up whenever she wasn't. So, And I've got me as well. So that's one way that you can use the voice profiler. And this is here every single time you open Hindenburg, just like the favorites. Now, the generic profile is... Um, it's just an effect. It lives in the effects bin. I just turned it on. This is all you need to do. It's one button. Now, uh, all this is, is a sort of, they took a bunch of uh, ideal broadcast, you know, quote unquote, broadcast quality voices, took a bunch of snapshots of the EQ, sort of collected that, made it into sort of the ideal generic broadcast quality sound that we all want. That is the generic voice profiler. It's one button, turn it on, turn it off. Now, every single show that I work on, anytime there's narration, I put the voice profiler on. You can go in and change the EQ if you want to, just by doing this. I almost never do. The only time I do is if somebody decided to record through Zoom and it was a terrible sounding recording, and I have to do some irritating things afterwards. That's the only time I touch it, if the if it sounds terrible. Otherwise, it sounds really, really good. I use it on everybody. Um, there is EQ as well, if you want to, you know, use an EQ on that's any that's what the sound time. engineers. Is, that's what the sound engineers in us want to do. We want to play with the dials. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So you can, I mean, you, any, and yes. And so it's adjustable on, on both of them. Um, and so it's a very simple three band and let's see, what else do we have? Let's go over noise reduction. I'm going to pull in this clip here and we're just going to listen to the before. So they launched a website called one frame of fame on the site. Basically they were in front of a fan with the air conditioner on. <laughs> now it was recorded. Don't do that. <laughs> Never do it. Um, but so let's just throw the noise reduction on. I have to say, you know, I have isotope and I've compared just, you know, with my ears, isotope with this noise reduction and isotope is so complicated and irritating to use. I, I do use it occasionally for other random things. 
But um, when I've compared it, this is sounds exactly the same as learning um, isotope and using all those buttons and knobs and configurations. So let's listen to this now. So they launched a website called One Frame of... Wait, I put it on the wrong track, everybody. <laughs> Hang on. You're like, that doesn't sound any better, Becca. Okay. Fame. On the site, you're presented with one frame from the video. Okay, because it was such a bad example, he sounds like he's underwater now. Hopefully you'll never record that way, but... The frame. Take a shot with your The noise is gone. And then upload the picture. More than 30,000 people have done it so far. So that's on and off. One knob and you're done. That's, it's very, very easy. Um, again, you know, the idea of having, they say that it's like having an engineer in Hindenburg. And it really is because it was built by an engineer and somebody that needed to just have it be really easy, but very, very powerful. So that's noise reduction. Um, what were the other... Let's see. Yeah, and then look at the compressor. It's one button. It's one button again. Yeah. Yep. So every this is this is exactly where I said it every single time on all my narration, unless there's an exception. But um, almost two and uh, and you know somebody else that works at Henry, Nick in fact does exactly two. I do just a little bit below. That's it. Uh, compressor on and off, one button. Very easy. Okay. Now that you've talked about using only Hindenburg, there's nothing else. We do have a question in the chat. Can we run plugins? <laughs> yes, you can. So but why would you, right? <laughs> well, I mean, so here's the, the deal. Like I have all these. Um, so they show up. Yes. Okay. Um, and do you know what kind of plugins? Because they're asking VST, AU, RTAs, et cetera. I, I believe know. this is David's question. David... Yeah. Well, okay, so let's talk about, obviously, we can import things. Uh, you can use things like Waves plugins. We can use plugins from Isotope. I know those are definitely used because I see people use them all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I will say uh, Isotope, you know, there is some syncing issues, so you'll use the standalone for that. Um, they They have not cooperated in... Uh, I don't even know how this works, but when you have to sort of connect your DAW to Isotope in a specific way so that there's no latency. Um, I know that Hindenburg has asked them to do this and they haven't. So you will have to use the standalone or just, you know, know that there's going to be latency and use it on one track at a time and don't yeah. edit that in real time. So that, but like I said, I don't know why you would use it um, unless you're going to, do do other um, you know features that that it has. Okay. Well, I need to uh, uh, talk about the noise reduction because even uh, Steph says noise reduction. In whoops, I just removed it. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, so the noise reduction in Audacity is is pretty good. I, I actually think it's really good. Um, and I'm trying to find a good example here. This doesn't have a whole lot of noise, but we could take a look at, I'll tell you what, let me do, um, let me just amplify all this stuff. And then we'll, we'll use that extreme example of noise. I'm going to solo this track. So we, all we hear is this. I don't know if anybody can actually hear that. It's, maybe that's not loud enough. I can barely hear it, but, but yeah. All right, let me just do it one more time. There you go. Okay. In fact, I'm going to put a little... Here, let's do this, and you can hear it. Yep. Now you know the difference. Okay, so if we do noise reduction here, let me put those back. Uh, noise reduction is really, it's a two-step process. It's pretty easy, uh, as long as you know what your settings are going to be. So we go to Effect and drop down to Noise Reduction. And then the two-step process is you have to get the noise profile, which is basically telling Audacity what I have selected is noise. So I'm going to select this now. Now the box goes away, so I have to go back up and do this again, which is unfortunate, but also gives me the opportunity to uh, select the entire track or uh, any section that I might want to run noise reduction on. So I can be very selective or I can just be inclusive of everybody <laughs> and then go to noise reduction again. Now in memory, it knows what the noise profile was and then I got my settings here and I usually bring it down to like, or not down, I usually do, you know, 15 decibels noise reduction. You can play around with these dials all you need. 
and then hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and you're going to see this change quite a bit because it's taking a lot of that noise away. Now remember, we made this really noisy, but if we play it back, in fact, let me do that little that little trick again so you can hear the difference quite, quite quickly. Zoom in, and let me play it for you. I can hear just a little bit, a little bit. And by the way, this is being recorded in a New York apartment, so uh, some of you would probably be able to see the fire trucks going by somewhere over here. <laughs> but the noise reduction, I think, is really good, and it doesn't destroy the audio over here. Have you noticed any changes when you do noise reduction in Hindenburg? Have you noticed any changes to the audio quality of the spoken word? If you have to crank it, like in that example where he sounds like he's underwater... Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's just a terrible recording. So if there is an example of a terrible recording, um, or in, if I'm doing, um, you know, like a field recording where I'll need to take away excessive noise, then I will do, um, you know, I'll run it through and then I'll export that selection and then I'll run it through again. Um, okay. Yeah. I so hate running things through processes, not just the second time, but at the end. Because I've already gone through it all with my detailed edit. And mm -hmm. then if I if it changes, I've already done all the editing. I have to go back and listen to it again. Well, oh. I, so, you know, I mean, and really, I've really only done this a few times where you just um, export selection and then, you know, export that little part that you just put the noise, the noise profiler on and then throw it back in. Or maybe I'm misunderstanding you. I'm what, saying I don't like doing any of the engineering stuff at the end like running it through. Gotcha. I hear people all the time, they, they run it through Alphonic at the end. I'm like, wait a minute. Why would you do that other than to save credits? Because I've already, you know, fixed the breaths and will it, I hear it does a good job that it does not increase the breaths that much, but I still wouldn't know. I wouldn't right. be sure unless I listened to it again to make sure mm -hmm. they came out okay. Yeah, it depends on what your workflow is if you're going to listen to it at the end, but then you're going to have to correct, may potentially correct a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Thank you, David. <laughs> and Steven says, I hope Hindenburg gets that feature. It's super useful. Oh, which, wait, let me go. Which feature? I think I just missed it. He said, uh, Reaper and oh, Pro yeah. Tools, et cetera, basically connect to Isotope. Okay. Yes. So it's something to do with the plugins, I think. is, is Right. That's what I was saying about how it communicates with, I don't know, with the, somehow it, they communicate and, you know, so there won't be any latency. Um okay. And then this question, I don't know the answer to on the Audacity side. Can you run RX Connect? What is RX Connect? I don't even know what that is. I know what RX is. I don't know what RX Connect is. I mean, is. I'm assuming it's a, what is RX? Is it, I don't know. I don't know what that is either. David, I'm sorry. Uh, see me after class. And I'll get that <laughs> answer to you. Because now we're going to talk about exporting audio. Uh, I'll just demonstrate with Audacity real quick. Uh, it's very easy. I mean, basically when you're done... Uh, you go to File, Export, and and I think people understand in this group, some people who aren't used to it don't understand there's a difference between saving a project and exporting. Exporting mixes it all down. It's done. You can't make any changes without opening up the project again, but I can export as MP3 or WAV. With MP3, I've got the different variations of you know constant or variable bit rate. Of course, we always pick constant, 96 or maybe 128 if it's stereo. Uh, or if it's music, hey, I'm going to do 320. <laughs> uh, I'm going to force export to mono, and I'm going to ask you, Becca, if, if there's an option for that in Hindenburg. And the only reason is because for my clients, music is not the main feature. And we only have one mouth, so there's really no reason to have stereo. We don't do audio drums and stuff like that. But then I just save it as, um, if all I had was Audacity, I would export it as an MP3 from here at these settings and then upload it to uh, my client or my client's media host. What do you do in Hindenburg? Okay, well, one of the first things you can do is um, set your ID3 tags. If you've got a podcast and you want to do that, um, you can go into session properties and set everything here. Um, you know, your episode, your title, you can do all your ID3 tags here. That is... Um, under properties, under file. After that, you can, let's go to export. And what was your specific question? You wanted to know, here's what you, you know, you can choose your 
wave or mp3 uh stereo or mono and you get all your options here here's where you pick your luffs we're gonna go negative 16 as we talked about you can do stereo or mono uh, because it's a wave here we're gonna do stereo and it's 24 bit you can change all of this here um let's go to mono and we've got the the same options so um, basically it, you answer the question there it's going to force it to mono yes you can you can why, yes yep. yeah i don't know why audacity calls it forces to mono it's i don't option. i don't know either i have i haven't heard that it's a, it is a choice <laughs> well, you gotta be forceful <laughs> um so and the other thing we can do is we can publish straight to our where we host our podcasts uh so the publish feature is this button up here um I've got SoundCloud and Libsyn, and if we want to add our wherever our podcast lives, we hit the plus button, and they add new ones as they come up. Um, but let's do. I see Buzzsprout in there. That's a Buzzsprout. real popular one. Yeah, there you that's go. Getting so popular. That's all Captivate. We do. Yes, I see Captivate. Yeah, there you go. Let's type in the name and hit next, and we can set our parameters here. Um, okay, really, really important question here. Mm -hmm. You're doing this. Uh, now, I manage, you know, 20 different Libsyn accounts for my clients. Mm -hmm. So how do I know I'm sending it to the right Libsyn account? Well, let's... Or if you had multiple Hindenburg or Buzzsprout. Let's see if I can add another Libsyn account right now because I already have one. Um, yeah, it looks like I, it looks like I can, and then I'll name it, you know, let's see. Okay. Um, if I, so here's, here's how it works. You type in the name and the password. Ah, so at that point I'm going to log so it will in. Show up. It'll show up there. Okay. Steve, you, you have asked me two questions I've never had before. Good job. Uh -huh. <laughs> and David, thank you again, David. I appreciate you being here and pointing out my brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just curiosity because I know these problems are going to exist. And yeah. and now we have to go back to the fact that, you know, with Libsyn, I can, I log into my Libsyn account. And if you're, if you don't have a Libsyn account and you want to manage people's accounts on Libsyn, you can create one as long as you set up and, and there's details. You can f contact me later. But uh, with Libsyn, I log into my account and I've got, you know, 20 different shows I can manage from the tab. Whereas with Hindenburg, I want to make sure I log into the right account to get the media file uploaded to. So you're saying at that point, I need to have their login, their password. So it goes right to their login. Oh, so you don't have their, you don't do, so I've done this differently. Oh, you've so got you it. don't use, like, they don't give you a generic, you know, their email with a generic password or, or here, password here, here. You, you got to see this. Okay. This is, uh, this is my Lipson account. Okay. And actually, I got to take it off in case it logs in the wrong. Okay, that's fine. This is my old podcast. That's why the stats are so bad. I can change the show from here. All these shows are shows mm -hmm. that I manage or have access to manage. Mm. And so the question is, when I am done with Student Loan Planner, I want to upload it and schedule it out in his account. How do I do that from Hindenburg? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good okay. question. So now this is a good excuse for people to say, I just use LastPass to store their uh, mm -hmm. their account and um you know that way they can get into that that client's account because i don't believe you got the access to use uh, LastPass within hindenburg do you not that i know of um yeah. my what would show up i have i have dash lane i think it's called oh well if dash lane does i think LastPass. and it do. didn't show up and it has not shown up in here oh it did not so that no. tells me it wouldn't work within hindenburg okay uh no, feature so. requests right there yeah, that's a great, that's a, yeah, email that to support, uh, support at Hindenburg.com. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's very cool. So, uh, you win that battle as well. Okay. Uh, next question. David says next question. D David says next question. <laughs> Thanks, Steve Stewart. Next question. Uh, looks David like. David is our moderator today. Thanks, David. Looks like you would just keep each account logged in. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't log you out. Do you have to log in each time you want to export to the media no. host if it's just no. your one show? No, because as you saw, mine just showed up. Um, and it didn't require you I, to prompt. Mine just show up. It didn't nope. prompt you for your password. So all I do is I, I click where I want it to go and I hit publish and that's it. 
Okay. Very, very nice. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Uh, anything else that uh, that we didn't cover that Hindenburg uh, just yeah. well, trumps? Well, I music maybe. Should we should we do music very quickly? Very quickly. Show me what you got. Okay. So let's throw in some music on this track. Okay. So. Uh, this is all non-destructive editing, I should say, as well. And this is going to pop up as we uh, figured out in a few minutes. But now um, I got a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> so these little handles here are handles. So when I hover over them, my my mouse, my pointer turns into a pointer finger, and I can now create ducks like this. I've just created a fade in, um, which I can. No, I no, I'm not. I'm your your host. For some reason, the audio is not playing either. It's not, it might it might take a minute, but you can see this. I've I'm creating a fade. Uh, and let's talk about a duck. If uh, I want to bring music down here, all I do is select the music underneath where this person is talking, and I drag. I can listen in real time, adjust as I go, create the fades. I can also. Let's say I want to bring this part down now. Um, you can play around with this, and it is really fun and very easy. I have just created ducks for for this entire little segment here that I have with a nice long fade out. And so it makes ambience and music really, really easy. Um I don't know if you got that. That was a little bit fast, but that's how easy it is to adjust music. I did, but uh, I don't know if really there's, I can adjust volume. You could pretend this is music just as easy mm -hmm. with Audacity. This is the envelope tool. Mm -hmm. So it's just as easy. And uh, even a better example would be, let me just get rid of this real quick. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, that was the one I just closed, right? I don't know. Well, those those settings remain in the project. So, uh -huh. I mean, if I export it, it's done. But if I go back into the project, then I can go back and change those, which okay. really comes in handy when I've got something like, I have the show where uh, we do an introduction. The guy says the same couple of words at the very beginning. Then there's this part of music that goes like this. Mm -hmm. Very Tonight Showy. And then he introduces yeah. all the stuff that's going to happen in the show, but sometimes the links are different. Mm -hmm. So I need that envelope tool to be able to bring in that music when he's done, mm -hmm. let it play for a couple seconds. And that can all be changed, but I've still got this template that uh, I can I can adjust sure. the volume every time, but I keep this template unchanged so that I can do that every single time. Gotcha. Okay. What happens when you move your region, when you move the audio? What do you mean? move your like uh move your audio around like move that region around move, move the music around does it stay what do you mean okay yeah it does uh, I, yes. you know how in like pro tools uh when you adjust the volume it's it stays on the oh on the timeline time and not the and not the region so if i had something happen at the one minute mark it would stay at the one minute mark regardless yep. where and what? yeah it does it in garage garage band too and different um different does do that but okay that's that okay. has to be something that's needed for music then because music's on a four four you know beat so that would make sense i guess for um you know pro tools is very music yes heavy yeah. yep uh it's just a lot of people who are in radio and and you know worked in studios like to use it for podcasting now yeah that's what they're familiar with which is why i liked audacity but Oh man, I'll tell you what, folks. You know, Hindenburg. We we keep hearing great things about Hindenburg. I have for years said, if I would ever switch from Audacity, I go to Hindenburg. And now Becca's making me use it more because I see some <laughs> great tools that it's going to save me. What did you say? Seventy percent of time adjusting mic bleed and crap like that. Yes, <sighs> for for magic levels. Yeah, I mean man. there are a bunch of things on here that I think are giant time savers. Um, and it's yeah. And they're just a really rad company. They're, you know, they're, everybody that works there, they're really great. And, you know, a Danish audio company. Nick lives on a boat in Copenhagen. <laughs> yeah. That's very neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Folks, if you got any questions for Becca about Hindenburg or if you want to ask me about Audacity, put them in the chat now. We're going to be uh, closing this up in just a minute or two. I do want to thank Hindenburg once again for sponsoring the Podcast Editors Conference, which is going to be the Podcast Services Mastermind Workshop for a one-day event August 23rd 
in Dallas, Texas. In fact, let me just put uh, let me put the easy one up there for you. This one here. Uh, the Podcast Editors Conference is just this one-day workshop. It's going to be an intensive mastermind walking you through the business side, how to create a business model. So, you know, identifying your ideal client, how to reach them, finding partners in the industry to help you. So if you think about like a, you know, a VA and a contractor or just even partners in the industry, uh, like Hindenburg could be a partner in, in what you do, then uh, come to the Podcast Editors Conference, August 23rd, Dallas, Texas. We're going to end the day uh, just before the evening kickoff event for Podcast Movement. So if you also have a ticket for Podcast Movement, you can stick around and network your butt off for a couple of days. That's what we're going to be doing. Join us. We're going to be having a really good time in Dallas, Texas. Uh, but go to podcasteditoracademy.com slash conference to see all the details and to get your ticket there. Because as Becca was talking about earlier, she spent $1,000 on a Marie Forleo uh, workshop class and and you're, you're still using those tools that you learned today. Yes, I am. Yep. Um, how many years later? <laughs> I still use it all the time. Yeah. Yep. I did a specialized training in 2009. It cost me $5,000. I walked out and I remember the moment I walked out and I looked at the sign above the door as I left. I was like, you know, I knew 85% of everything that we just went through. But that confidence and knowing that all the all the holes were plugged up and having that organized structure now just made me just this the confidence level made it worth five thousand bucks. Tickets to this this conference is two hundred bucks. And you're gonna get so much more value out of that. So folks go to podcastcenteracademy.com slash conference, sign up, get your butt down to Dallas, get there the twenty second, and if you're there early enough, you can go to dinner with Mark and I, Mark Deal and I, because I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna wanna go somewhere for dinner before the next wear out day, because it'll be a long day, but it's gonna be a good one. Becca, thanks so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Steve. Um, did I win? Did you win? <laughs> That's up to the audience. The audience, uh, I feel like you you may have. I've, I've definitely got some, some, you got some good hook, right hooks in there for, you know, <laughs> you said non-destructive and I was on the mat for at least, you know, five seconds. Well, I saved it. Didn't I didn't want to lead with that and, you know, <laughs> knock you down early. I'll get no, you thank a you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Here you go. I'm going to award you with the trophy for the oh, day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate you. And folks, if you want to learn anything more about Hindenburg, go to Hindenburg.com slash events slash PEC. That's a landing page they've designed specifically for us uh, since they're sponsoring the Podcast Editors Conference on August 23rd. All right. We got a couple more comments in the chat. Uh, oh, Yay. Oh, we both won. Steve, I don't have anything for you. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm you're sorry. my guest. You don't bring a okay. bottle of wine. Sure. Next okay. time I see you. All right. <laughs> Next time I see you. Cool. I appreciate everybody's time watching the live stream. This live stream will be available. I think we'll keep it up till the end of the year. So if you want to go back and relearn anything, see how Becca did some of the clips and stuff in the on the clip side, the library, I call it. Uh, man, good stuff. Anyway, appreciate y'all. Anyway, oh, I hate my, I got a client that does that. It drives me nuts. I edit it out all the time. Anyway. <laughs> I, I didn't want to edit that out now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for staying up really late like Steph. Yeah, thank you, here. Steph. And everybody. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And thank Goodbye. you, Steve. You're Bye -bye. welcome.